Hey, this is uh, assignment two for CS50's introduction to game development, uh, the breakout power up update. Uh, I believe I've uh, implemented all the changes. This is sort of how the level plays out. Uh, the changes will be uh, out of the So let's take a quick look how I did that in the uh, power up lure. This is one I created. We initialize a power up. We take in the skin for the power up, which could be the key or the multi ball. We take a reference to the brick um, because each brick may or may not have a power up associated with it, and a reference to the player's paddle so we can detect when the player collects a power up. We initialize the power up 16 by 16. Uh, we want the power-ups to spawn in the center of the brick, so when the bricks hit, we uh, take the x and y axis of the brick. Uh, the y axis is just for safety because I appreciate the power-ups and the bricks are the same uh, vertical height, but this is sort of so it spawns in the middle of there. We set the acceleration of the power-up on the y axis to 50, so it sort of floats down the screen. We don't need the x axis because they only travel downwards. We use our in play flag to determine whether the power up is being rendered sort of in play or not. We keep set, set a reference to the skin, so that's the key or the multi ball. Keep a reference to the paddle, so that's the player. And we we'll define a new variable collected, which is false if the player collects the power up or lets it fall through the screen to the bottom or not. So that's how that's used. This is AAVV collision detection, which uh, collides the power up with the player. So uh, it just returns true. Uh, we can reset the power up, so we just. Um, set the in play to false. When we update the power up, if the power up's in play, so we want to sort of um, render that, we move down the y axis only. If we're colliding with the player here, um, that means we've collected the power up, so we just set that to true, and then we remove it from the screen instantly. Um, if we uh, sorry, carry on down here, um, when the power up is lower than the paddle, yes, so if the power up's lower than the paddle, then we just remove it from the screen. Um, if it's in play, then draw it on the screen. So that's pretty much the power-up class there. And the first requirement is add a power-up to the game that spawns two extra balls. So uh, in main.lua, let's track it back to the start. Um, I've added a power-up um, here to the uh, global frames variable here. And so that just cuts up all the textures from the sprite sheet. Here's the sprite sheet. It's the, pretty much the last 10 entries here. They're all 16 by 16 pixels. If you divide this up into 16 pixel chunks, this starts at 145 and goes all the way through to 153, I believe. So uh, 10 entries. Um, in the util class, that's where I added this at the bottom. So cut 16 by 16 chunks from entry, uh, sorry, 154, from entry 145 to 154, um, step by one each time, then slice it using the method, and that'll give us all our quads, 16 by 16. Uh, so with them we can reference our power-ups here. Uh, so then in main, so that's where that's getting set. I've added some sound effects, so um, when we collect power-up, it plays a power-up uh, sound. Uh, if you hit a locked box and you don't have a key, it'll play the lock sound. If you hit a locked box and you do have the key, it'll play an uh, unlock sound. Uh, then going into the play state, that's where most of the logic is here. Um, so coming in. Uh, the multi-ball, right, we used to define one variable called ball, and now we're setting it as a table called balls, so we can have more than one in there. I've increased the velocity of the default ball so, uh, to improve testing, and then put the default ball into the table, which is self ball. So that's our sort of balls table. Here's the multi ball method. I'll just look where that's being called from. So in the play state update here, this is the sort of chunk of code I added here. So um, self bricks is our reference to the bricks. If the brick has a power up, so if we look at our brick lure, I've added a power-up variable here, and that gets set if the brick has a power-up, it may not have a power-up. So how do we know if a brick has a power-up? Well, when we hit the brick, I've passed in a reference to the player paddle and whether we've collected a key, we'll discuss that shortly. Actually, let's discuss it now while we're in here. So if we've collected a key and the brick is locked, uh, I've added a couple variables here. So if it's locked, it's a key block. 
Um, it may not be a key block, um, but that's how we determine how we can unlock key blocks. Um, so if it is a key block, it's in play, and we've collected the key, that means the player's collected the key uh, power up, remove the brick from play and play the unlock sound. If, the key, um, if it's not a locked brick, so it's just a normal brick, it doesn't require a key, just do the logic as normal. When we're doing the logic as normal, there's a, a 1 in 2 chance, uh, so I've just used math.random here equals 1, so a 1 in 2 chance, and uh, we don't currently have a power up defined for this brick, then we just initialize a new power up object here using our power up lure. Um, our index is for the uh, multi ball, there's an index 9, and the key is index 10, so just pass in a random uh, 9 or 10, that will generate a multi ball key. And pass in, um, pass in a reference to self, which is the current brick being hit, and the player's paddle there. So that's what our power up class needs to know, and that will generate a random power up and it'll start moving down the screen. Uh, this will probably be something like a 1 in 5 chance, but for testing, it makes it a lot easier just to set it low. So um, that's all with that. So if we go back into the play state, we can say if the brick has a power up and it's been collected by the player itself, then toggle the collected. So um, we want to know we've collected this and it won't just keep spawning power ups. Play the power up sound, which we've created in main.lua. If the skin is 9, so that's the multi ball power up, then call this method here. Um, you can pass in a number of balls in play, so that includes the one currently in play, and that will add more balls to the um, game. If it's a number 10, uh, which is the key skin, then just set the local flag key collected uh, to true. And again, as I just discussed, that gets called um, by this all this code here. Um, in the... In, I believe it's the brick. Yes, like that. So we've discussed that. Um, uh, so the activate power, that's where we add more balls into play. That's right here. So it takes... Um, how many balls you want in play at one time, so we're passing three there. Um, you take away the number of balls in the table, and that gives you the number of balls you want to add to the game. We loop through the number of balls we want to add um, based on this, and we just random their velocity, give it a random color, spawn it uh, in the middle of our player paddle, and insert it into the table. Simple as that. Um, and for the collision detection of the multi balls, I've just wrapped a lot of this logic in um, a for loop here. So we're going through each ball. This is the uh, play state update. And we're calling pretty much the same logic, but looping through each ball. So we're checking collision on bricks with each ball we add in there. The only thing I sort of changed in here was if the ball goes out of bounds, we remove the ball from the table. We don't want to end the game, we just want to remove the ball from the table. And after all the four loop, we're saying if there's no balls left in the table, then decrement the health and do all the other stuff um, in here. So that's pretty much how we added the multi balls in there. And again, when you're rendering the balls, you just loop through all the balls and render them. So that's, that's pretty much it. Then grow and shrink the paddle uh, when a player gains enough points or loses a life. So I did the paddle shrinking, um, so here's the sort of constructor for that, I pass in the skin and size for the paddle. This is some code I added here to improve the collision detection depending on the width of the paddle. So it's, it's quite simple, we just pass in a, a color for our paddle and our size. So that's the only change I made to paddle there. Then in play state, uh, when we lose a life, so right here, this is the logic I added to grow the paddle. So if the paddle size is less than our maximum size, because in our uh, sprite sheet we only have one, two, three, four paddle sizes, so we can only grow to the biggest one. Store a reference to our current skin and size, because when we start the game a player chooses a skin, we don't want them to select red and then our new paddle is going to be blue, it would be kind of weird. So store the current size and skin. Initialize a new um, paddle object here and just pass in the size incremented by one and that will give us a new um, bigger size when we lose a life. And when we get to the victory screen this is where we set it back to two because we don't want to go on to the next level with our bigger sort of paddle. It might seem like cheating because you're doing so well. And the um, so we've added the balls, we've grown up the paddle and the locked brick. So the locked brick in the level maker, I've added a tiny bit of code here, um, it's a one in ten chance uh, just for sake of testing, it will generate a locked brick per level. So um, we'll set a B locked to true. I've added a variable in the uh, brick lure that just says locked, and that determines whether it's locked. I sort of discussed that earlier. 
uh, if it's not a lock brick, so not a 1 in 10 chance, then just run the code as normal. So when we play the game, which I sort of discussed already, um, if you hit a locked brick, it will play the locked brick sound effect. Um, that's in the hit method for the brick, uh, which I s yeah, here we go. So that's where it generates the power up, but if we hit a locked brick, uh, we need to collect the key in order for the brick to sort of go away. And we collect the key when we collect the key power up, which I sort of mentioned before, the key power up is right here. So when we, the skin is number 10, so we've collected the power up, set key collected to true, and then we'll know, uh, based on whether the key collected, whether we have the key, and then we can destroy the uh, brick, which is locked. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Kind of, uh, I'm pretty sure I've covered everything I've added in this project so far. I went kind of fast. I want to keep the videos um, somewhat short. But, yeah, that's sort of how I implemented these changes. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty fun project. And, uh, yeah, I had a, had a lot of fun with it. So, um, I might be improving.